Hi everybody, my name is Nicolas Garil. I'm a freelance character artist and uh, also the proud and really happy winner of the uh, Titan Contest organized by the Substance Team. And today I wanted to uh, show you my workflow, uh, the tools uh, I used, obviously a lot of um, Substance tools, and how I use those tools to achieve these results. So let's start with the design process. So for this contest, we had to use the Substance uh, tools and I've been using Substance Designer for a bit uh, in the past and uh, I knew that the, uh, the software were, is really powerful for procedural textures and weathering effects like metal weathering. So since the beginning, I, was, I, I tried to think about how to exploit how to, um, to use the, the, the power of those tools. Um, since the design process, I tried to, uh, to think about this when I, as soon as I started to design my, uh, my entry. And so the idea to do a Rocky Titan uh, came quite quickly because I knew that the uh, rock material would be um, uh, would be uh, easily achieved with Substance Designer and the, the, the powerful procedural tools in it. So I thought it was a good idea and I wanted to add a little bit of metal uh, in my Titan too because I wanted to use the, uh, the weathering, uh, procedural weathering effect that Substance Designer and Substance Painter were able to, um, to, to give us. So when I started to think to this, so I'm going to do a titan that's going to be a little bit rocky with a little bit of metal, the inspiration came uh, quite quickly and the inspiration came from uh, a game called Shadow of Colossus which got this, um, almost the same features I think and this is a game that I really like, I really like the, uh, the art so now that I got an idea of what I want to do, uh, I like to start directly uh, into ZBrush to uh, concepting my uh, character. And uh, the reason why I'm starting directly into ZBrush and not making a thumbnail and concept in uh, Photoshop or in 2D is... Uh, uh, well, the first reason is because I'm bad at drawing, but the, uh, the other one is because I think, um, especially for a character like this, it's, uh, I prefer to work in uh, all the different view, uh, I mean the, the front, the side and the back view at the same time and working the silhouette and progression in uh, all the different view at the same time instead of uh, just drawing one view and then trying to bring this back, in, uh, bring this into ZBrush, trying to uh, uh, sculpt this and uh, trying to make fit all the other view uh, from the one you were concepting uh, into Photoshop. So in ZBrush it's uh, way much easier to uh, to work the overall proportion, especially if you got a character you know that you're gonna turn around so uh, you want to pay attention not only to one view uh, but to all the, all the uh, angle of the, the view angle of, uh, of your character so uh, I prefer to start directly in ZBrush and as you can see I started from uh, this sphere I really enjoyed the, the this sphere because it's really easy and quick to prototype a character so this is my this sphere I started with and then using dynamesh and zero measure I was able to uh, start uh, concepting my character so as you can see uh, this is a mesh that I dynamesh first with so started to sculpt onto it and then at the end when I got the proportion right and the, uh, the, the silhouette kind of right, I, I mean I know it's not going to move too much, I do a zero mesh onto it so I, I can have a nice edge flow and nice topology uh, which is really useful for starting to uh, uh, design a little bit more in depth, uh, a little bit more detail. So after that, I uh, starting to work on the uh, different elements, and uh, as you can see, uh, everything is really rough. Everything is super uh, rough, and uh, 
uh, not polished at all, but uh, I still consider this as a concept mesh. It's not my final mesh, it's not my high-res mesh, it's just a concept mesh. And what I mean is, uh, at this stage, uh, I need to um, I need to be able to uh, redo uh, redo everything if I need to. I mean, um, I don't want to spend too much time on a, an area because um, if later I decide to uh, to redo it for some reason because I think it doesn't work well with the uh, overall design, I need to be able to redo it. And if I spend too much time on this, sometimes I, I can think like. I spend too much time on this area. It's uh, I feel bad to uh, to to uh, scrap that and redo that. So maybe sometime I can be lazy and say, oh, okay, uh, I spend too much time on uh, on this area. It's gonna be alright. I know it's not perfect, but uh, I'm just too lazy to redo that. So I'm just gonna leave the, that way, and it's gonna be alright. And I think it's pretty bad to think like this. So. Uh, to avoid this kind of situation, I, I just tried to keep this really rough. Everything is rough and everything, uh, as you can see, this is, uh, this should represent uh, trees. Obviously, it doesn't look really, really good, not, not good at all, but uh, it's just placeholder that helped me to uh, visualize the silhouette of my character and the progression of my character. But uh, uh, anyway, at the end, everything's gonna be redone. So, uh, if you uh, if you just look at the uh, decor, for example, uh, I just spent a little bit more time trying to uh, uh, think about the details, what the design is gonna be here. But uh, at no point uh, I uh, I think like it's gonna be my final mesh. And then the the topology is messy, uh, nothing is polished at all. So uh, so this is the way I like to uh, work my concept. And when you spend enough time on the concept, it's time to work on the uh, high res mesh. So this is my high, final high res mesh, uh, the one that I use to bake my uh, normal maps, etc., etc. Uh, so as you can see, I don't think this is a model that is overly detailed. I don't think uh, there is a lot of detail in it, and the reason why is. Uh, I knew that uh, I would be using Substance Designer and uh, Substance Painter and I knew that uh, Substance Designer is really great for making procedural textures and noisy texture and it would be perfect to make the uh, small details that you can see on the material, especially for the rocks for example. So I knew that I tried to work a little bit smart and uh, not uh, spend too much time onto my uh, high res and put the uh, micro details onto my arrays because I know that the micro details would be easily uh, added uh, into with Substance Designer into my uh, normal map. So that's why, uh, as you can see, um, the, the surface is uh, is not, uh, there is not crazy details, details on it. Uh, if you look, for example, at the shoulder pad, you see that um, except the shipping effect, the, the surface is really smooth and I, I know because I, I know that later I'm gonna add all the little details that make the materials looking like metal uh, with my Substance Designer. So Substance Designer really helped me to uh, spend less time on the high res and uh, be able to, um, um, to achieve the uh, needed high res much quicker. So for the, uh, the low poly, I like to use the uh, 3 Smart. So I bring a decimated version of my mesh into uh, 3 Max and set 3 Max to say that I want to uh, snap onto it uh, using the uh, draw on surface. And since for this top, for this contest we were we we had the limit of uh, 100,000 triangle and. It, it's a really high, really high uh, limit. So uh, to to go quickly for high resolution mesh, I like to uh, high resolution uh, retopology. I like to use a method in 3ds Max. I like to start with something really, really uh, low. For example, I I, I redo for the, uh, the the shoulder area and the uh, the arm. 
an example of what uh, I'm trying to explain. So I'm trying to do something really low, but pay attention to the, uh, the topology. And uh, I try to have, for example, a loop that's going all around um, the, the shoulder and going um, under the, uh, the uh, armpit, etc. Et so I, I try to pay really attention to the, uh, the topology, but don't uh, care really much about the, uh, the details and all. And because when I got my mesh and when I uh, lay down the, the topology I want, it's really easy to add details in 3ds Max. You can uh, just throw a turbo smooth on it and add a little bit more resolution if you want. And then with uh, you, you can use the conform brush and with the conform brush you can uh, you know paint on your uh, topology and it's gonna snap onto the uh, the high res mesh. So this way, it's really, really easy to, um, really, really quick actually to uh, to have um, pretty, pretty high resolution locally. And the best thing about this is you have a lot of um, a great control on the, the the topology and the edge flow. And you see that since I'm using a turbo smooth, I, I still keeping my edge loops around the uh, the armpit and the uh, the arms and the shoulder. And this is really good. So. This is the way I like to uh, to work for the grid topology, and for some area, for, because you see that um, you you can have some trouble with some area with a little bit more complex details. So for this area, I like to use the um, uh, zero mesh uh, model that I I bring back from Zebra, uh, ZBrush, and I like to just select the face of those uh, really complex uh, shapes. So for example, for this guy, it was mostly around the belly. I got a lot of um, rocks with a sharp edge, etc. So I selected the face of all this uh, area uh, and tried to merge this with my um, my new retopology. So this is basically how I did the, the retopology. And at the end, I finished with something, uh, something like this. So you see that I kept the chain. The chain was already done, so that was a good thing. And uh, for everything that is mostly organic, I used a lot of uh, the zero mesh. Even for the color, even for the color, since the limits was pretty high, uh, I, I chose to have a little bit of comfort and use the zero mesh for this uh, to keep a little bit of the um, the details I sculpted on it. So it can be useful for for that too. And for the um, for the vegetation and all the uh, alpha card, it was using the uh, hair and fur modifier. Uh, the hair and fur modifier uh, in 3ds Max can let you um, uh, grow some plane on a mesh. It's uh, extremely powerful for this. And the best thing about this is you can um, you can tweak the um, the density with a map, you can you can create a map and say, okay, I, I want a lot of uh, vegetation on the arms, not so much on the belly, etc., etc. So this way, I was able to uh, uh, not only tweak the uh, the lens of my alpha card, etc. So, but also the density. So you see that I got much more uh, much more vegetation here, but not so much uh, on the uh, the buttocks, etc., etc. So that was something I was able to control with the hand and modifier. And lastly, for the um, for the trees, I just built a couple of uh, a couple of trees and then uh, duplicate this onto my mesh with the um, I, I like to use the object paint object paint tool in uh, 3ds Max that let let you paint literally paint mesh on the uh, on a model. So for this guy, I paint the trees onto the back of the uh, of the of the Titan. And finally, for the uh, for the UVs, I used 3ds Max again. So for this contest, we were limited for um, two uh, two 4K maps. But I realized that the uh, the beta version of Substance Painter was limited to uh, 2K maps. So I tried to separate my character into uh, actually eight. Eight UV map, eight U, uh, eight U set of maps of 2K, so uh, that would be equivalent to a two uh, 4K map. So I just um, I, I just separate this into uh, I separate my Titan into uh, eight UV sets, 
So uh, as you can see, I got uh, eight ID and I got one for the legs, one for the torso, one for the uh, the arms, etc., etc. So basically, there's um, nothing. Uh, there is nothing too complex for the UVs. Just uh, separate this into uh, eight IDs and uh, just work on the, on uh, your UVs. And now it's time for the fun box. So that's mean texturing with uh, the substance tool. So for for the for this contest, it wasn't required to use only these substance tools, but uh, I found myself that I didn't even add to use Photoshop. I didn't even try to to make everything into the substance tool. It just naturally come. I didn't even need the uh, feel the need to use Photoshop, and it was really really cool. I I, I was really surprised of uh, how uh, how far you can go with all the substance tools uh, without using Photoshop. Actually, I did everything on, except for the, uh, the alpha and the foliage and all, but everything else was done into uh, substance. And it was really uh, a natural process for me. So the first thing I did uh, was to uh, bake the map in Substance Designer. So um, uh, I used, I, I created a graph for this, but um, the, uh, the, the Actually, the package I created for this is mostly for uh, baking the stuff. The, the graph is not so important. You see, it just I just uh, linked some uh, some map that I baked with some uh, output, but it just matter for me for um, to be able to export everything at the the right place in one click. And I also created the the, um, the cavity map from the normal map. Uh, for example, this is this one is for the arms. So I just use the curvature, curvature node, and uh, make some uh, levels on it, blur a little bit so it's not too sharp, not too pixelized, and then uh, export this into uh, save this into a cavity map. So it, it would be useful later in uh, Marvel set. So I did that for all the. Um, all the UV set ID that uh, I got, so eight of them, and the graph, the graph was just here for for me to uh, keep every everything in the same place, which was more uh, convenient for me. And when I'm done with the baking, it's the uh, the part that I love the most. It was to creating the materials creating the materials that then we're gonna be able to uh, apply on our mesh in the Substance Painter. So I created several uh, graphs for each material I knew that I wanted to apply on my character at the end. And uh, so for example, you can see this is my metal, the, the, the metal I created for this. And I think when you're creating uh, material into Substance Designer, the, the most important thing is the uh, height map. So this is uh, this is this. This is my head, my height map for the um, for, for the metal here. And when you got your height map, you can use this uh, map for the diffuse. You got me. Uh, tra you're gonna transform that for the diffuse, then transform that for the the roughness, the sp the normal map, etc., etc. So you're gonna be able to convert uh, this height map into all the map you need. But uh, the main focus for me is to have a height map that looks right and if you uh, manage to do that you are already done uh, half of the work so maybe even more so for that for this uh, for, for this material for example the the metal one uh, i started from uh, by blending some noise so i got a pretty generic noise with one with a little bit of uh, like motion blur on it. Uh, just wanted to uh, rotate it in in the uh, of in 19 degree, and then uh, using the generic noise, I walk. I use a walk note on the uh, kind of strip uh, strip um, noise. So this way I can bring a little bit of the distortion in it, and then use a blur just because I think it was a little bit too pixelate, pic pixelate, pixelate, so I use a blur for this. And um, sometimes I add to add some uh, level nodes because 
when I know that I'm going to want to have a little bit of control and um, I know that I will want to uh, expose the parameter of my level node for later I'm going to be able to tweak the, the, um, the height map uh, really quickly like uh, for example you can do that in Substance Painter you can expose some parameter of, the, uh, of your level node so this way it gives you the ability to uh, change the height map directly into a Substance Painter and this is really a, a cool feature you don't need to go back into Substance Designer make some change and go back again in Substance Painter to see the results you can change, tweak the value directly in Substance Painter but for that you need to expose those values so again I kept um, I, I created another noise uh, another type of noise, so for example this one is uh, uh, again, uh, it's called the cloud, it's a little bit cloudy but I uh, put a level node after that so um, I removed a little bit of contrast and then I, I blend the two noise, so this one and this one together with a, a third one this one uh, with a lot of uh, contrast and um, a lot of patch so this way I can blend that and it looks like there is um, some patchy area where there is the, the strips, noise and other area where it's just a uh, regular noise and so I think it gives me a, a cool effect so sometimes you see the, the strips but uh, it's bracked but in some area it's, bro it's broken and uh, I really like this effect and lastly it's the um, another um, Another detail that I bring is um, I started by uh, this is an FX map, but actually it just um, it just um, alpha of uh, a circle, a smooth smooth circle alpha, and using a splatter node, I can uh, duplicate this and I can uh, random random uh, randomly uh, splatter this into my texture map, and then using a directional warp it's like I wanted to add a little bit of a drop, droplet effect so it was like a little bit of um, when it was mold when it was cast um, the, uh, the iron, iron was uh, liquid and uh, when it cooled down you can sometimes still see a little bit of this um, droplet effect so I wanted to uh, mimic that and I thought it was a uh, good idea to use the directional warp so you see that um, it's like there is a little bit of gravity in it and using another noise uh, I tried to um, uh, strengthen the effect a little bit more and then again I'm using I, I like to use the uh, to place sometimes a transform transform node because uh, if later I need to change the size or the rotation rotation of this uh, job blade, I can do that later in Substance Painter for example and then I uh, blend the, the together so that means my uh, base noise with the drop uh, droplet effect give me that and now I can make it tile so now I can use my head map to uh, generate all the, uh, all the, all the uh, output I need and um, for example for the um, for the diffuse out output, uh, I like to use the uh, emboss emboss node, and uh, I'm gonna be able with this. I'm gonna be able to give a little bit of um, relief and uh, give it a little bit more uh, interesting effect for uh, for my texture. I, I can change the intensity of this, but uh, you see now it's looking like it's uh, in relief, and I really like this effect. And then it's just a matter to blend that with uh, some uh, color node and uh, just pay attention to the intensity of the effect so uh, it's not too obvious in the diffuse. You, uh, this is way too much for a diffuse, so, uh, but it can be interesting to just give a little bit of, um, little bit of the effect. And then anyway, I exposed the... Um, like you, like you can see, I expose the opacity, so uh, I still have control of this parameter later. Uh, for example, in Substance Painter, if I need to, if I uh, I want to increase the uh, the effect of the uh, the the effect of the emboss 
into my diffuse, I still can do that into a substance filter. No need to go back into substance designer to tweak that. Uh, the only thing is you just have to uh, expose the parameter. And yeah, so for the normal map, obviously, uh, I just create a normal node and uh, I plug my uh, height map in it, and then it's done. I can put that into my normal uh, output. And for the roughness, I like to use the, the curvature node. So you need to fit the normal map into the curvature, it gives you the curvature effect. And you need to, um, you need to invert the, the curvature because of the way the roughness is working. It's working with an inverted, kind of inverted specular map. So um, just don't forget to invert that. And then uh, again, just uh, by overlay this with um, some uh, colors. Uh, it gives me my roughness, and again, if I expose the right parameter, I'm gonna be able to uh, have uh, still have control of the uh, details into substance uh, substance painter later. So this is for the uh, the metal, for example. Uh, I got I did one for the the rocks, the the one that is used on the body of my character. So as you can see, uh, as you can see here. And this one was a little bit more complex, but uh, not so much. Actu actually, uh, it was done fairly quickly. Uh, I was really impressed by the, how quick you can, it can be done. Even if the, the graph may look a little bit complex, it's really not. Uh, and for this one, I started with, um, it, with just this map. This map is something that I, I sculpted into ZBrush, and I grabbed the... Um, I grab the uh, the alphas in ZBrush, the uh, the height map. So this way, I was able to uh, bring that into a substance designer and um, then add more effect onto it to have the, the right uh, right rock effect uh, rock effect I I wanted on my character. So so for example, this is just my my base. So this is the map I sculpted in ZBrush, and then. I make it tile. I use the make it tile patch, so this way I can make uh, my texture tiling. Uh, this is really nice for if you got some texture that is not tiling. Uh, just plug this into uh, this node, and you're gonna have a texture that is tiling. And the good thing is you're gonna be able to make it um, all the details much smaller if you want to. So uh, this map I bring that into two different nodes. One which is really tiling a lot, and another one which uh, not so much, uh, obviously. And then uh, I blend them together, and the reason why is because I wanted to, um, it, it's just to bring a little bit more uh, smaller details layer on top, on top of my uh, 8 map, the, the one I bring in from ZBrush. So this way, I was able to uh, use uh, to add a little bit of uh, fissure and um, slash effect. So I just bring this some alpha map again. Uh, all these alpha maps are one that I found into um, into ZBrush that come that came by default into ZBrush and are used to make uh, brushes. But um, I re recycle them. Uh, to use that into uh, into substance designer. So you see, I got a lot of uh, map for shipping effect, uh, fissure effect like this, and it's just a matter after that to use the um, splatter node, and I'm gonna be able after that to uh, splatter this uh, randomly onto my map. And I got, I did that for all my all of the alpha as you can see, and then it's just a matter of blend them together. So you see that uh, here I got everything, all the um, all the, the alpha that I've been blended together and then I can invert that. Uh, and uh, same thing for the, uh, the, the same thing I did for the bed. So that means I did uh, several uh, tiling with different size and then blend them together so uh, I get different um, um, random size. So you see, I can have uh, a slash with, which is really big and some that is really, really small. So uh, it gives me a lot more variation in my opinion. And 
I did the same thing for kind of a shipping shipping effect. So you see again, I got some um, alpha texture that I, I bring back from uh, ZBrush, the default default folder of ZBrush. You can find all these uh, alphas. And again, I just um, splatted this for all of them, and it just uh, after that matter to uh, blend them together. So at the end, I got something like this. I invert that again because uh, I don't want uh, I this should be a horse it's not it shouldn't be a bump so that way I invert uh, invert this and uh, then I blend everything together so this is the base with the, uh, the slash uh, effect so you see um, it's it's difficult to see but uh, I don't know if you know, on the videos you can see that but I want it to, uh, to be really subtle, I didn't want it to, to be too noisy, so uh, uh, I uh, tweaked the uh, level of that, but um, at the end, when everything is blended together, uh, I got something like that. This is my height map. Uh, I added some noise, like contrast and luminosity, and uh, make it tile again, because I wanted to have control in Substance Painter, painter later. Uh, and same same for the size actually and then with this I can use the height map to uh, generate the uh, all the uh, diffuse and roughness normal etc for the diffuse it just matter to um, using the noise blend this with a color all right and using another noise just for variation sake so this is another noise blending with color too and uh, blending the two colors with um, with a third noise that's gonna be used as a mask and uh, I uh, added another another noise I like to stack several noise uh, until I, uh, I got the effect I like for example this one was more like um, more like a, a patchy patchy noise uh, so it gives me a little bit more contrast into my um, into my diffuse, and then it's just a matter of uh, making some uh, some tweak, and uh, for example, make it making a tile sharpen a little bit so it becomes a little bit more noisy, which is I think more natural for a stone effect, and then bring the uh, bring the height map and blend that together so after that it's just a matter to bring uh, generate the uh, ambient occlusion from the height map so I'm able to uh, to generate an there is a node for this that is able to uh, create an, an ambient ambient occlusion like map from a, an height map and then um, I bring that into my uh, diffuse, so I still can see the uh, ambient vision effect into my diffuse. And then just uh, bringing the also the um, the curvature effect here, so it just add uh, another layer of contrast and overlay that with my diffuse. And this is my final uh, diffuse. So you see, I can have. Um, pretty nice uh, rock texture in my opinion and I didn't use any photo ref any photo or something like that the only thing I did was to sculpt a quick height map into ZBrush but even the height map that I sculpted into ZBrush was really basic and uh, it just served as a, a base and um, thanks to a uh, substance designer I was able to, um, to build something uh, that is looking quite nice uh, really quickly with just um, a little bit of uh, alpha map that uh, I bring together but uh, I didn't I didn't paint, paint anything in it and lastly for the moss so you can see this is the moss the moss was extre extremely simple to do it just um, two color uh, one green light green and one, another one a uh, little bit darker that is blend together with a um, noise map so it's giving me this i did some um, adjustments on the uh, hue and saturation 
and bring a third color again with uh, another um, another mask and then um, uh, yeah I, f I forgot to say but uh, for the uh, height map I just used um, a noise it's it was really simple for the the height map it just used one noise that uh, is in the uh, in the menu in the noise menu uh, if I can find it here uh, something called uh, helm one which was uh, pretty convenient for me because I was trying to make some mouse so I thought that the help would be the best and then just uh, add um, a little bit of tying effect etc etc and then bring uh, so the, it was my uh, color color map uh, I did added a little bit more uh, details with another noise effect on onto this so um, I got some more interesting effect on it and then it's just a matter to dial this so it's uh, it got the right size use the emboss emboss effect and uh, right now it's too sharp so uh, I'm using uh, a blur so making it a li looking a little bit more smooth and uh, this is basically what I got for the diffuse the normal map was pretty simple too just coming from the height map and the roughness as well you just uh, inverted the height map and uh, blend that with a with a color so uh, i will be able to tweak the roughness later etc etc and finally i used the substance painter to apply the uh, dose material onto my uh, character so I just loaded the uh, substance files into a substance partner so you can see I've got my uh, rocks sub substance uh, substance I got my substance for the the moss even for the the horn because I created a, a material just for the horn too and I was ready to um, apply that into substance painter so in my texture set I got all my um, my eight uh, UV texture UV set uh, loaded at once. I, I was able to paint onto my character with uh, with the old uh, 8 UV uh, UV set. I I use Substance Painter um, just for the body. I prefer to use Substance Designer for everything that is metal because uh, I prefer to use the uh, nodal uh, nodal display to. Uh, to apply weathering effect uh, and more used to do this but it's also possible to do that into substance printer I just uh, I've been used to do that in substance designer so for everything that is metal etc etc I did that into substance designer but for substance printer uh, I created the several layers for each of the um, each of the parts of the body and if we look a little bit closer for the torso, torso for example, you see that uh, at first I'm gonna hide everything, uh, so we're gonna be able to see this, all right? So you see, this is uh, for the torso. This is just the, um, the the base. So my first layer is the base rock, one uh, called base, and. Uh, it's just a, a fill layer where I put the uh, my substance file for the rock, and uh, you see that I got all the um, all the option, all the parameters that that I exposed into Substance Designer. So this is why this is really important to expose some parameter because now I got a lot of control into a Substance Painter too. So as you can see, for example, if I need to change the size, I want something a little bit more little. Let's say I want a size of 80 for the X and 80 for the Y. You see now I got something. The details are much, much more um, uh, smaller. And this is really interesting to, um, to make some quick change without going back to Substance Designer, make some change cell again and load this again in Substance Painter. I prefer to do that this way it's fully it's much quicker in my opinion so this is all the um the parameters that i exposed i uh, was able to uh, to play with that and uh, and it gave me the just the base and then i put another layer uh, again this is a, a fill layer 
with uh, with the same substance um, five, but this time I changed the color and with a, a mask, I, I apply a mask. I was able to uh, to a different color. Uh, and so it, as you can see, the belly got uh, a lighter, uh, a little bit more saturated color. Uh, I thought it was interesting, and. This is a this is just a layer for adjusting some colors because I, I wasn't really happy, for example, with those blue patch here and there. So I, I just created a simple layer of paint onto it uh, for the diffuser, and then it's time it's time for th this layer is for the uh, ambient occlusion and cavity because you see that if I go into solo mode. I can check each different output individually. So, if I'm looking to the, uh, this is my ambient occlusion. Um, you can, yeah, you can add um, different output. You can add output, uh, whatever output you want into the document setting. So, for example, you see that I added the AO, AO and the, the KVG. And this is my uh, ambient occlusion, and uh, this ambient occlusion is uh, generated by the substance file. You see that uh, it's um, it's directly into the uh, the substance. The substance is able to uh, the substance layer, sorry, is able to uh, output the diffuse height map, roughness metal, and AO and cavity at the same time. You just need one layer for everything. This is this is something that I, I really really like. And this way, I was able to uh, to uh, output the ambient occlusion uh, from the substance file. So, so in this uh, in this layer, I just uh, it's I just um, change the intensity uh, of the uh, the cavity, especially for the cavity. I think yeah, you see the difference before and after. I just filled this layer with a uh, white color and uh, if I go to the cavity mode yeah the, right now I'm watching the um, the layer stack for the cavity output and now you see that um, um, this is just a white uh, colored fill layer and for the cavity I just uh, change the opacity to uh, 70 so we still are able to see some of the uh, the cavity pass but uh, it's really subtle because um, the the original one was way too strong and uh, the result was not so good in my set so this way I was able to adjust the intensity of the cavity if I needed and after that we got uh, we got some uh, layer the, those layer are for um, this is the map that I baked uh, into a uh, substance designer and then I import it back into substance uh, substance painter so I still got them and um, I just put that on uh, multiply mode so it's multiply on top of everything I had before so you can see same for the uh, this is my ambient occlusion uh, just a, a quick thing this is just my uh, AO and cavity in one layer. Both are both are in one layer, and I just added a new layer just to uh, fix a little bit the ambient occlusion because uh, my, the the bake wasn't perfect. So uh, I just take a little bit of time just to try to fix uh, some area and maybe maybe try to uh, improve the uh, ambient occlusion, especially around the uh, the belly. So as you can see, I just wanted to add a little bit more strength uh, around this area and then finally if I go back to the diffuse mode oops. and finally I got uh, the last layer was for the moss so I just loaded my uh, moss layer uh, moss substance sorry and just painted and uh, actually uh, I used uh, for the mask I used uh, an, an effect uh, I just generated a map into Substance Designer, so I, uh, I can mask all the faces that 
uh, all the, the surface that is facing downward. I prefer because I think it's more natural to add the moss just on the, the surfaces that is um, facing upward. And uh, so I load this into my uh, mask and just uh, keep refining a little bit more. So uh, at some place I want it to remove or add, you still can edit the mask. This is, this is why this is really powerful. You still can go to the mask and keep uh, painting on it if you want. Uh, you can edit that. So, yeah, so basically this is how I did my... Um, uh, how I use substance painter to uh, quickly apply the material. It was really quick and I, I was really pleased uh, with the, uh, this process. This is the graph I used for the, uh, the, the metal, the texturing of the, the metal. So uh, this is, for example, for the, uh, for the color, color thing. And, um, and yeah, so basically what I did was to blend the, all, the, uh, all the different patterns I already created into a uh, substance designer. Uh, you you can you can publish those materials and then you can uh, kind of reimport this into a, a new graph and use that as a, a node. So you see, for example, this is this is my node for the metal painted. You can you, you see uh, you can recognize the same um, droplet effect, etc., etc. So since I exposed the uh, parameters, uh, I see. I still got the uh, the parameters here, and uh, I still can play with this. And the only thing I had to do was to fit my uh, custom node with um, a uniform color, so I can change the uh, the, the base color of uh, of my uh, texture. So, for example, if I wanted to use something more bluish or etc. Cetera, et cetera, you see that the effect is, uh, you can see the effect right here in the preview. view. Alright, let me just go back, alright. And I just I just added um, another layer, another level of, uh, of dirt. So uh, it was really simple, just uh, bring a noise node and make it tile and then uh, overlay this with my uh, diffuse. So at the end it's giving me something like this. And I got another material. Uh, this one is a really simple one that I created. It's just for uh, where they're gonna be uh, weathering, you see. It's more like the, the shiny, shiny parts of, the, uh, of my mesh. So uh, this is something, uh, it's just a simple mat metal material with uh, a more lighter color and uh, um, smaller uh, roughness, uh, roughness is something that is uh, more dark, roughness more dark. And then just by using the uh, material blend node, I was able to blend uh, my, my two uh, material together and uh, with, uh, with a mask, a mask that you can see here that I generated from the normal map and using the curvature node, I was able to have a, a nice uh, curvature effect and just uh, you, you, can't, you can't feed this into the uh, metal, I use the metal edge wear uh, node, uh, which is uh, a node that is coming uh, by default with Substance, Substance Designer and I think works really well, so you just have to feed the, uh, with a curvature and ambient occlusion. And this is what it gives you. And this way, with this mask, I can feed my uh, material blend node. Um, so this way, I can say, okay, uh, whatever is black is gonna be the uh, my uh, old metal kind of uh, dirty metal, and uh, the white area is gonna be the the, the the one that is a little bit more uh, shinier, the shinier metal. And this way it gives me this nice effect, nice weathering that I really like on uh, my material. And I got this effect really quickly. And then I just did use another material blend again with the output 
of my first one and um, just for a kind of um, dust effect or dirt effect uh, as you can see a little bit in places like uh, here so it just I think a good effect to break up a little bit the uh, uh, add a little bit more details onto your your texture so for this one I, I even to even didn't create a material for the dust it, it was just a, a noise that I had the color for this I'm just using a gradient map I was able to add the color for the for my nose and just fit that into the diffuse it was really simple I, I didn't want it to spend too much time for for uh, creating a material for the the dust for me it doesn't make doesn't make so much sense so uh, I thought that it would be plenty enough and then just using uh, another effect that you can find into the uh, sub substance library by default uh, which is dust and you just have to fit this with a uh, ambient occlusion map and uh, world space map and here you go you got your final final texture really quickly so i was able to uh, to blend everything together with a nice weathering effect into substance designer and after that i can go back into 3ds max and think about the pose so for the pose i, I chose to make a, a quick rig of my character into 3ds max and then bring it uh, back into zbrush to tweak a little bit more but uh, for a character like this, uh, where there is a mix, a blend of uh, hard surface and um, uh, organic surface, I f I feel like it's a little bit difficult and a little bit, little bit cumbersome to work the pose into ZBrush because um, it can be tricky to uh, to have a nice uh, rigid uh, deformation for for those for some areas and. Uh, well, I, I mean the um, the selection method is not it probably not the best for this kind of uh, character. So the masking method and uh, transpose line etc. is really powerful for only organic uh, mesh uh, in my opinion. But for something like that, it's, it can be a little bit hard. So that's why I chose to make a quick rig uh, of this character. Uh, even if after that I bring it, this into ZBrush to tweak a little bit more, but it's a good uh, way to, uh, rigging this into Max is a good way to have a quick pose to work with. So I just uh, I just created a simple uh, simple skeleton. Uh, there is nothing uh, really crazy about this, I think. Uh, just added a couple of uh, control rigs, so I was able to move that uh, really uh, easily. Uh, and just for the legs, it's just a IK, IK rig, so nothing too much crazy. And when I was done, I was able to um, work on some pose. And um, after a couple of uh, try on the pose, this is the one. Um, this is the one I, I chose. So this is. This is the pose uh, I chose to go with, and when I was done with the uh, the, the posing, I just uh, took my character and uh, bring this into a ZBrush. All right, so here is our guy into ZBrush, uh, the one that I imported into ZBrush, and this is before the tweak, and uh, after the tweak, after I tweak this into ZBrush using the move brush and transpose line etc. I got this uh, version, so you see that it's just some subtle uh, tweak just because uh, my skinning wasn't wasn't good at all because I, I didn't want it to spend too much time anyway it was just for uh, it was just for a pose so um, it's not like the character would be animated after that so uh, I went really quickly on the, the skin uh, process so uh, I wanted to um, uh, tweak I, I, it needed a little bit more tweak into the brush and also uh, I made some changes uh, also on the, the proportion of the character even the, at the very very end it's uh, still possible to do that so uh, after that I was uh, ready to uh, 
export this and input it into a marmoset tool bag and I was able to uh, work on the uh, real time render. Alright, so finally, this is the final render of this character. Uh, I just uh, inputted the, uh, the mesh into a marmoset and um, I just pay attention that each UV set are separated object, as you can see, so it was easier for me to uh, apply the right material onto it, and then, uh, yeah, I just uh, created um, uh, I just created material for each UV set and I applied to it. It's nothing crazy about that, just uh, bringing the texture map uh, into the right slot, and it was good. So. For the lighting, I just show, um, shows an environment map that I liked and then added a couple of lights so I got a, a strong one for the key light with a hot color and um, a one for the rim light with a bluish color, something a little bit more cool, a cool color to contrast a little bit the, the, the lighting and uh, this is it. So I hope you learned a, little, a bit from my workflow and uh, I hope it was useful to, uh, for you and I can't wait to see what you're going to be able to do with the, uh, the awesome substance tool. So see ya!